Hey, let's talk a little bit about stick welding electrode sizes. So there are a wide variety available, but just a few that are most common. And we're going to try all of the most common ones on some thick material, take some cross sections and look at a whole bunch more in this video. First of all, we need to get something straight. The amperage setting that you use on your machine depends a lot more on the type and size of electrode than it does on the material thickness that you're welding. So let's start off by running a weld here. I'm using a 3 seconds of an inch, 7018. That's a pretty small one and I have my machine set to 80 amps. I'm welding together two 1 8 inch or 3 millimeter thick coupons just in a T-joint. I'm running along here, and this is usually a pretty good setting, but uh, I'm realizing about halfway through it's running a little bit hot for me, but I'm going to press on through this uh, all the way down along this joint. Now at the end here, I'm getting a little bit of arc flow, which is where a magnetic field interferes with the weld puddle just a little bit. I'm just keeping my arc length as short as possible to try to combat that. Now there are a few ways you can prevent arc blow. That's a topic for a different video. So let's take a look at this weld and chip some of the slag off and we can see what size weld we got by just running at a pretty natural pace with that 3 seconds of an inch electrode. These are weld fillet gauges and they're used to measure the size of this type of weld. Now this end is used to measure the length of the legs out from both sides then the other side measures the throat. Now this weld is checking just a little bit under 3 16 of an inch. Now the size of weld that you need depends on a lot of factors and it's really an engineering decision, but as a general rule of thumb, you want it to be at least three quarters of the material thickness or a minimum of right around that 3 16 of an inch. Now, why am I talking about weld sizes? I thought this was about electrode sizes. Well, a larger electrode is gonna deposit more weld. So if all we need is that uh, 3 16 of an inch weld bead on something thinner like this 1 8 inch thick material, then that small electrode is going to be just fine. There's no reason to run a larger electrode on something like that. Now what if we move up to some thicker material? Let's try another experiment. I'll grind some mill scale off this one half inch thick, that's 13 millimeter thick plate, so I can run three welds with the three common sizes of electrodes. All 7018, of course. After we weld this up, we're gonna cut it apart and take a look at the penetration. First up is the 3 seconds of an inch electrode set at 80 amps. This is the exact same setup that I used to weld the T-joint on that thinner metal at the beginning of the video. It appears to be running smoothly, but will it penetrate material that's four times thicker with the same amperage setting? Find out in a minute. Next, I'll crank it up to 120 amps and run the 1 8 inch electrode. It's running really smoothly, once again with a clearly visible puddle, followed by the slag. I've left the camera in one place so that you can get a sense of the perspective between the different sizes of electrodes. Finally, maxing out the machine at 160 amps, I'm running a 5 seconds of an inch 7018. Once again, running very smoothly, just supersized. These 5 seconds of an inch electrodes lay down quite a bit of material in a hurry. In order to see the difference in size, I've put all three welds side by side. This is pretty fun to watch and see how similarly they're running, even though the weld on the right is running twice the amperage and a much larger rod. In order to keep a consistent weld pool, I'm just using the same techniques that I teach in my online courses, paying attention to things like my arc length, and rod angles, how I'm traveling, all the things that we practice in those exercises. So if you are learning to weld and you wanna walk through it in a step-by-step -step way, check those out linked in the description. After they're all welded, we can see the slag starting to crumble on its own. The third weld bead is a different color because the first two have been covered over with weld fume. Let's cut through a cross section of each to see if they all penetrated the same or if one of them's just laying on top. I cut the corner out of this plate using the plasma table, then sliced through each of the welds using a horizontal bandsaw. The profiles look good, but I'll need to smooth this out to get a better look. I started with a grinder and a flap disc, then moved down through three different stages of surface conditioning pads to smooth things out. You might notice how the blue pad leaves some residue, which then gets picked up later on. For this reason, I don't like them as much for critical weld prep, but they're great for this. Now I'm using some nitol, which is nitric acid mis mixed with alcohol to edge the welds. They don't sell this at the hardware store, but I've seen Jody on Welding Tips and Tricks use just navel jelly from Loctite. You can buy that at the hardware store. It's like a rust dissolver. 
uh, to etch welds. If you want to take a look at yours at home, just always be careful whenever you're working with any chemicals. If you look at the lighter region, this is the actual weld. You can see how the penetration profile is similar relative to the size of each weld in every case. All of them penetrated down below the surface. So the smaller 3 seconds of an inch electrode running that same 80 amps was able to weld anything from a 1 8 inch thick plate clear up to that half inch thick and it can honestly go about as thick as you'd like to go with it. That being said, the weld is really small. So if you are welding thicker plates and you need that larger fillet weld, then a big electrode is a good choice for you to be able to fill that in. But you might not have that available. Maybe you're running on 110 volts and so you only have you know 80 or so amps available to you or maybe you only have smaller electrodes. Well, that's where you could go ahead and run multiple passes with your welds and be able to build that up a little bit larger. Now, as a general practice, it's better to run the larger electrodes because every time you run an additional pass or restart where you have to stop and start back up again because your rod ran out, uh, you risk running into a defect and also just takes a bunch of extra time. So running a larger electrode, good idea if you're welding thick stuff, but not absolutely necessary. You can definitely get a sound weld that penetrates in on thick material using smaller electrodes. Just to recap, your amperage setting depends mostly on the type and size of electrode that you're running. If you're welding really thin material, you need to use a small electrode because it won't be able to handle the higher amperage that you need to run a large electrode without blowing holes right through it. And last of all, you can weld thicker material with small or with large electrodes, but large electrodes are definitely preferable. Now, this video isn't sponsored by anybody other than my online courses. You'll see them linked down in the description below, and I walk through step-by-step -step in affordable, self-paced courses to help you learn how to weld. Until next time, weld safe, and we'll see you then.